Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, send the Holy Spirit upon Brad to send the wisdom and the words to come through him so that he can share it to all of us to enlighten us on your word and so that we may also think outside the box. Amen. 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 Father, Son, and the Spirit. Amen. All right, let's think outside the box. So, what did the game and oh, the I game lost. have to do? Oh, oh I lost. I did. What did the game and the game have to do with each other? What did each game have to do with each other? And how do they both think inside the box? Don't think much. Good to think. Um, yeah. Good <laughs> think. Good to think. Good to think. Good to think. Good to think. Things where they belong. Like, well, the, there was some of, of the putting things where they belong. I never even thought of that, Emily, to be honest with you. My mind went to there are two, they're both about being creative. And they're both about, well, first of them, both about being a little bit, for one of them, about being very bold. I mean, you guys, no offense, I love you all, but your shoes are gross. <laughs> Feet are gross in general. Right. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I know, my feet are gross too. Listen, I don't like touching my own feet. At the end of the day, I barely want to take my own socks off. I usually do one of those where you stand on the toes and you pull your foot out yeah. and you just leave the socks on the floor and hope somebody else picks them up. And the other thing that was really, the other thing about with this one, it was really about figuring it out and being able to put some thought into it and put some effort into it. Because what, because what we're going to talk about tonight is about putting your thought into it and your effort into it. So this semester we talked a lot about St. Paul, this is his year, we talked about who he was and what he did, we talked about how he was an evangelist, how he was the great person who brought the gospel to the Gentiles, and the reason why we're all here is because he, he turned Christianity from a little sect off Judaism and into one of the largest world religions. And for decades now we've been talking, and thousands and thousands, oh well, 2,000 years we've been talking about this guy named Jesus. And people like St. Paul, who knew him, who followed him, and who started the early church. But tonight, we're not going to talk about, about any of that kind of stuff. Except to just mention him in passing. We're going to talk about, I'm going to hopefully try and motivate you to go out and do what St. Paul did. Because we are, right now, we're kind of at the Feast of the Ascension. The Ascension is the feast where Jesus goes up in heaven. Do you know what happens during the at the end of the Feast of the Ascension? Jesus up in heaven. Yeah, but what are the disciples doing oh. on Sunday night? Think about it. The, Jesus goes up, and what do they do? Who heard Father James' homily this weekend? You have an idea. What do they do? Exactly, Haley. They go like this. <laughs> and sometimes I feel like... Sometimes I feel like Edge is a little bit of that experience in life, teen. And, and in the church in general right now. We often spend a lot of time going like this, going to church and looking up. And we don't go anywhere. I really liked Father James' homily this weekend. And it really ties into what's coming next. Do you know what next Sunday is? Next Sunday is a big feast day as well. Mary, do you know what next week is? We'll come the Ascension, and then what's the big one with the fire? Pentecost. That's right. The feast of the birth of the church. So in Pentecost. Speak in different languages. So when the Pentecost and the Holy Spirit comes and strikes them and they all start speaking different languages. That's right, they but speak they all every understand language. understand each other. There's going to be a quiz at the And they're not speaking right. in tongues. Oh, okay. So the purpose of Pentecost is that you go forth and you're sent out. And I think that's where we fall down as a church, especially as Catholics. I mean, how many of you have had, have had the experience of not sharing your faith? Have had the experience of somebody talks about your faith and then you know, you're quiet about it. And if, for, those of, for those of you who aren't raising, who may not have raised your hand or said, or identified, you probably are all liars. No offense. I'm a liar. And even if you, maybe you're not conscious of it, Julia, but there's opportunities every single day where people will 
will challenge you. And in fact, if you're not being challenged about Christianity and nobody's like calling you on your behavior, then maybe you're not living out your faith. Today I had that moment. My friend. Well, those of you who are, those of you who have brothers and sisters, those of you who have brothers and sisters in grade nine today had that experience. The health nurse came into the grade nine class at a junior high in this neighborhood and said that religion is the reason why sex isn't talked about, wasn't talked about, which is totally nonsense, by the way. That's not true. It's not true. Doesn't even make sense. Anyways, neither here nor there. Let's get back to the point. The point is that we're trying to... Maybe I should have left my shoes off. I could have tossed them to you. <laughs> what we're trying to do tonight is talk about living our faith boldly and proclaiming the gospel. And be a disciple. Part of being a disciple is going out and sharing your faith is going out witnessing to your faith. And that doesn't mean you come up here and do a talk like this. Maybe it does. But what it means is going and living your faith in your everyday life. And it's tough. I mean, I was thinking about it today, thinking about doing this talk, and thinking about how many times in the last year or so I've, I've messed it up. That I've messed it up. And how you're going to be put into awkward situations. I met my aunt last year in July. I went out to meet her before I hang out with Brad in the summer. I remember, I'll never remember to forget the day because it was raining like crazy. And I had to go meet her. The backstory is that my, my aunt's only son had passed away. So my cousin passed away in May. And so she was driving across country and she was coming home. She's from here originally. So she drove from Edmonton to here. And it was the punchline of a joke, right? Well, Brad's going to know what to say. He's going to know how to fix it because he's the religious one. Well, what do you say to somebody when they when they buried their only son? What can you say to fix it? Nothing. There's nothing I can say to fix that, to make it better. But all I can do is be who I am and what I am. And there's going to be situations like that, situations that are different for each of you, that God is preparing ahead of you. This is, the, this is the thing that Jesus said. He said that I, the Spirit will come. The Spirit will go out before you and prepare things. There will be opportunities every single day for you to witness to your faith. And the question is, are you going to have enough courage when, those, when they meet you face to face to look at those people and say, well, this is what I believe. Or are you just going to talk and not listen? Or are you going to just keep walking? and not pay attention? Or are you going to be hard-hearted and not hear it? Because I've seen it. When I look back, birthdays have a habit of making you look back and look forward. You look forward to what is to come, usually the next big milestone. So when you're my age, 30. And then the other one, you look back. You look back at all the years that have come being past. You think about past birthdays, past friends. And for me, I always look back, especially when I'm preparing a talk, and I look back and go, well, did I do that? Was I really there in that situation? The one thing I've learned time and time again is that no matter how many times you fall down, God will give you an opportunity for redemption. When you're mean to somebody in high school, God gives you an opportunity to fix it. When you're mean to somebody yesterday, God gives you a chance to fix it tomorrow. There's always a redemption. So my hope is that through all the stuff you've learned here at Edge this year, that you're going to take it and live it out. That you're going to be like St. Paul, and you're going to proclaim your faith. That doesn't have to mean and you dress up like Bible boy and you run around smacking people in the head with a Bible. It could be as simple as holding the door and smiling and it could be more elaborate. That was not smart, John. Okay. Kill the cameras.